Hi again, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Last week, when I introduced the 201 analytic essay assignment, I called it a mini version and a microcosm of the 201 research paper. Today, I will discuss another crucial way in which that is true, the use of frames and cases in the analytic essay and research paper. The idea of frames can be difficult for some students to grasp, but really, it's not as obscure as it sounds. You can think of frames as lenses through which to view cases. As we use the term in 201, a frame can be as simple as an idea or a concept or it can be as complicated and as abstract as a theory. What these definitions have in common is the way that all three ideas, concepts, and theories are used by you, the writer, to help illuminate cases. The law provides a useful way of thinking about frames and cases. Frames and cases work in your essays just the way that in a courtroom a law is applied to a case. In a courtroom the law is the frame. In your essays you will use cases to show how statistics, data, studies, or experimental findings are instances of a general principle or framing concept. Just as the theory of gravity provided an explanation to describe the motion of the falling apple in the 17th century. Newton's law was an especially powerful theoretical frame. We call that frame a paradigm, a frame that actually changed the way people understood the world for hundreds of years. Your frames do not need to be quite so grandiose, but choosing a rich idea or theory to use as a frame can make your essays all the more convincing. As in expos, the connections you make between texts is central to the writing you will do in 201. We use the term frame when we want you to use an idea from one reading to frame a case from a second reading. In other words, to use a frame from one text as a model for interpreting an example from another text. All 201 courses, as you know by now, begin with a set of readings selected by the instructor that include one or mo more framing texts. It is expected that you will use at least one of these sources to help you frame your position in your analytic essay. Included in those readings are scholarly and non-scholarly but credible sources. The scholarly articles you are reading or will soon read include both theoretical material and case examples. It is unlikely you will find theoretical framing concepts in non-scholarly texts. So as you read the scholarly articles, be sure to have your highlighters in hand to mark those framing concepts. Now I want to show you a single body paragraph that a student of mine last spring wrote in her analytic essay for my 201 class, the topic of which was climate change. I think you will agree that she made good use of a framing concept from one source to illuminate a case 
from another reading. In the face of the rising sea change, cities throughout the world are at risk of being submerged. An increase in sea level would leave millions of people displaced and jobless, creating a society where only a small percentage of the population is working. If this were to happen, the world would face a global economic depression, especially if the more significant powerhouse cities like London, New York, and Tokyo fall victim to the impacts of climate change. Unfortunately, cities are not able to be moved and were not designed to adapt to rapid environmental changes because of a concept called path dependency. Newer cities were built off models from older cities because of their successes, thus creating a circularity where there is no evolution in the design of cities. Zengal estates, once set in train, behaviors, institutions, and physical ass assets become hard to dislodge. This means, notice that here she's explaining the frame, this means that once our society knows something, it becomes increasingly more challenging to move away from it. Cities are locked into their designs that in a few years, with the impacts of climate change, will no longer be practical. There she's connecting to the upcoming case. For example, Miami, the case, a city built on tourism and beachfront real estate, quote, is now caught in a deadly paradox. Coastal development must continue to keep the city running, but developing the city is suicidal folly in the face of rising seas, unquote. For as long as Miami has been a city, it has continuously been growing its infrastructure and real estate on the coasts. But as the sea levels begin to rise, those practices will become obsolete. It is a path dependent city. It will continue doing what works to keep it running until it no longer can. I want you to note how she brings back the frame at the end of the paragraph. Well done. It helps to see concrete examples of other students' writings to make the principles I discuss real for you. You can find her entire essay in Canvas in a folder called Resources Sample Papers. Talk to you later.